Otto. They're gone. After ten years, I can't believe they're finally gone. It's over. After all these years, the siege is broken, and we're alive. Thank the gods for sending you to us. This is a glorious day, but I have heard a bitter rumor in the wake of all of this. Is it true? Has Talera fallen? Then the rumors of her dishonor will finally be silenced. She gave everything to us in the end, and the world will know that. When we rebuild these walls, we'll name them after General Talera. Her memory will stand as long as the ramparts shine. But she never would have been here had you not delivered her to us. It can never be enough, but we hope you'll accept this as our thanks. Now we rebuild. Rubble from the outer walls is still blocking the gate. It will be some time before we can clear it. Until then, Agarth says you've got unfinished business with an old friend in Detir. Don't worry yourself. Soon we will begin the campaign in Cluricon. Lyria is smart. It is the hero of Melson Shear. Care to take a look at my wares? Another time then. Greedy. Looking to restock? Ilan Doldran has what you need. Come back again. Keep walking. <laughs> when the greater Niskaru arrived. Well met. The next ship out of here is heading for Rathir. Are you interested in coming aboard? To Wrath, here we go. A new day has... ...called for Nelson Shear. Siege breaker.
keep walking. Finally, we found the last person we need after all. I'm Helic Cross. I'm leading an expedition to the land south of Dalantarth, the Teeth of Naros, and we could use another strong back. Few facts. The only record of a successful journey there was by an Alamein missionary named Denric, returned half dead and maddened to hell. <laughs> he claimed the southern land as home to a miraculous city, wrought of gold and trimmed with silver, even said it floated above the earth, if you can believe it. It's hard country, damn impossible to find a pass in the mountains, but if I'm right, this cavern will take us under them. Then we only need to begin. I've seen to all the logistics, and all the preparations for the journey. Meet us in the Southern Passage. Let's try to cover as much ground as we can. It's the cave next to camp. I heard rumors that it was filled with artifacts that none had ever seen before. Strange carvings and huge works of stone. I don't know how dangerous it is. But I advise against being too carefree inside. We should go in as a group. Stay close. The time of deliverance is almost nigh. The teeth of Naros have gone untamed since the rocks were young, since the wind was but a child. And now, my chosen people stand on the precipice of taming this land, or succumbing to it. I thought once that none could change the stars of this world. But at last, one has come who can. Come, thou faithless one, I beckon thee. What the hell is that thing? Is it? It looks like it's made of stone, but this, this stain, this is blood. This thing is flesh! I'm, I'm not going to stick around and find out what killed this thing. This whole damn place is cursed. Leave me. Damn Craven. Don't know what Cash was getting so worked up for. Just a statue somebody toppled over and got all bloody. Let the mage run to his mother. We don't need him. We don't even know if it was a corpse. Could have been a statue that an Etten decorated with some entrails. 
or something. I can't believe that craven. Wait a moment. I... I don't like the look of this hallway up ahead. This is Ferry's area of expertise. Let her take the lead here. <gasps> what was that? First the mage turns coward. Then Sferi dies doing the one thing she's supposed to be suited for. Is this some sort of joke? What's next? Are you going to reveal you're really just a kobold with a bad case of mange? Clearly, I should be more thorough when recruiting my expeditions. Fine. Let's just keep moving. We'll manage on our own from here. We keep going. Cash proved to be useless, and Sveri's not helping anyone anymore. Looks like it was always up to us. With just two of us, we'll have to try and manage as best we can. It won't be easy, but I thought something like this could happen. Come, we must make Sperry's death. In the hell were those things? I've never... I've never seen anything like them. I heard of the dangers of the southern land, but are the gods themselves conspiring against us? Those damn beasts hit me worse than I thought. I... I think I need to rest for a while. Here. I'm going to wait here. Scout the passage ahead, and see if you can find a place to make camp. Will you stop fussing over me? It's not doing either of us any good for you to stay here. We need to find some place to make camp. I'll take it. But I'll wait until I really need to use it. Be ashamed to waste the thing, wouldn't it? Now get going. I need to rest. Discover what you can, and come back to me. I told you, I'll be fine. I'll save the health potion you gave me for when things really get dire. Now, find a place for us to make camp. Go. <laughs> You need to find safety for us.
And so, after centuries, it has come to pass. The cipher has reached thy hands, Beckett. At last, my work can be completed. One who watched and waited for decades and centuries and eons, and all for this day, when thou wouldst come before me. I have read the fates of this world to find thee, unfated one. Much rests on your shoulders, but I have one more burden to lay upon thy brow. To continue thy path, through the, through the tapestry, tapestry of fate, fate and, and perpetuate its sundering. I, I will open, open the way to the, the teeth of Naros. Seek the Primos, and, and thy duty will be made clear in time. Go now with my blessing. Go now with my purpose. For thou art beckoned. That which was ordained must be undone. First we have an army of Jotun at our gates, and now this. I don't know you, little one, but you'll find no quarter here. This is still Colossi-held territory for the moment. State your intent. Everything does harm in these lands. I do not know you, so why should I take you at your word? Furthermore, none have come from those caverns since they were sealed, save you. How is it you came here? Strange entity. A curious riddle, but one that must be solved later. It seems the Jotun have rallied their strength. Steal yourself! Well fought, little friend. You have a strength in your arms that belies their lack of girth. Perhaps you are not the interloper I believed you to be. 
You claim to have been summoned, but for what purpose? What strange forces brought you here? You speak of the Holy King of my people, and that artifact you bear. Could it be the cipher? Your mission is twice damned already. The Primos is a recluse. But more immediate than that is the Jotun Horde. Idilla is sealed off as long as they continue plaguing my people. Yes, hiding away in his high tower and pining for gods that will never listen to him. The Primos is the highest office among the Colossi, reserved for the one that leads my people in politics and prayer. At least that is how things should be, but Anakatos, the latest to have this authority, has not lived up to his duties. Our people are stranded in a wild land, in a time of our greatest doubt, and he locks himself away from us. Our ruler leaves us leaderless. The Jotun are led by Karank, a warlord that reigns over his horde from his ramshackle tower. One of my scouts, Remy's, watches them now. He can offer you advice on fighting the warlord. And when, if you can kill Karank, I will lead you to the Primos myself. The quickest way to end their threat would be to kill their war chief, Karank. With his death, the others will be brought to heal. Bring word to the Help city. Me, I say. They will need to know about the Jotun and this new interloper. <laughs> Ah! What a horrid little thing you are! Are you some kind of Jotun runt? Explain yourself quickly. The last thing I want is to give away my position. That much I was aware of, and I knew Sikandra would send someone. But you! A sign of the times, to be sure. But if you're to do the deed, then I have information that you will need. Karunk is truly powerful but no more so than his brethren. It is not his strength that's troubling, it's his fortitude. Two kobolds he keeps with him work some strange magics that heal his wounds and help him resist injury. Kill them, and the fight is yours. Using primal magic would certainly help as well. Strange thing, aren't you? Primal magic is a magic imbued upon weapons and gems. Only armament can channel it. The magic does some damage on its own, but its true strength is its ability to augment other magics you cast on your foe to a devastating degree. Take this weapon, use it to inflict primal magic on a foe, and let loose your spells. Even a Jotun warlord could not withstand such an onslaught. It is an older form of magic, one that does little damage on its own, but can wreak havoc when combined with elemental spells. Using weapons infused with primal magic, you can increase your foe's magical sensitivity. Even a troll's hide will have its resistances sapped. Imagine loosing your most damaging spells with no resistances. Few would survive such an onslaught. 
Be careful.
from Remy's, I received word that one such as you entered Karunk's tower with no trepidation, no anxiety. Do I even have to ask? Does the war chief still draw breath? It... it was said the gods would call their champion. And here you are, bearing the cipher, seeking the primos. For your role in deposing the warlord, I give you this. A hammer prized among the Jotun, so I'm told. Use it as your trophy. Now my forces can put the rest of the Jotun to the spear, beckoned. With their leader dead, they will likely keep to themselves and lose the will to harry my people as they have. I will wager that they won't suffer incursions into their camp, for good or ill. But still, they have caused my people suffering. Shall we wait and allow them to inevitably rise again? This is our best opportunity to finish them. I... I owe you much for killing Karunk Beckoned, so I will do as you say. I only hope you do not reap bitter fruit from your generosity. Now I will take you to the Henge, and then to the Primos, as I promised. An artifact my people made. With the city in the sky, we knew we needed a way to travel from the teeth and back. The energies it focuses are the same as those that keep the city aloft. They can levitate people and objects safely. Very well. Here, Beckoned. This artifact you see before us is a henge. We use it to transport to the city. It may be uncomfortable at first. I still recall retching after my first journey with it. But it is the only way into the city. Very well. And here you have it, Idilla, our great failing. Now let us go to Anakatos. He may hide from our people's needs, but he will not refuse a visitor sent from Athene. The gods choose the Primos to lead we Colossi and to enact their will. Of the gods, we are the favored of Athene, the goddess of wisdom, or we were. Athene's once common words have been quiet for some time. The Primos has prayed in isolation for years, but she does not answer. Very well. Mind your step here, Beckoned. I wouldn't want the Colossi's failure to claim any more lives than it already has. 
It is not here by choice. Or our choice, anyways. Such questions would be better suited for the Primos. Suffice it to say that this was made in anticipation of something that never occurred. Be cautious in these lands. Beyond these stairs is the sanctuary of the Primos, the leader of the Colossi people in the teeth of Naros. I must warn you, Anakotos has not left these quarters in years. He vowed to never cease his prayers until the gods answered them. And his people have languished for it. But I think his answer has finally arrived. Speak to him, Beckoned. His people have need of him. After years in his sanctum, I doubt he is the Primos I once knew. But though we all languish in the gods' absence, none suffer as he does. He will likely see you as the answer to his prayers. Be cautious in these lands. Thank you. Is there anything I can assist you? fraught with tribulation, know that it leads to the land of our greatness, and that we walk it with you. Such were the words the gods spoke to the progenitor of my race when they sought to guide us from our base origins into a fruition of potential. Words have been in my heart every day of my reign, but now they are embodied. Welcome, Beckon. At last, this city will be complete. Because we are all of us, my whole people, incomplete. Because we are not worthy enough, not deserving enough to see such wonders of the gods. And I thought that failure was a finality. I have prayed to the gods in seclusion in hopes of an answer. But they were as quiet as the silent choir. Now the beckoned is come. With you, the gods can bear witness to us atoning for our inadequacies. We must start at once, beginning with the Wreath of Absolution. The Wreath of Absolution can only be created from the hands guided by Athene. I must ask you to assemble it. First, a golden prayer circlet is needed to serve as its base. The art of crafting one is all but lost to us, but I require one all the same. The last Primos to wear a wreath of absolution, Arches, is buried with one such circlet. Sikandra led you to me, did she not? Then she will lead you to the circlet. It lies in his crypt, in the darkest pits beneath the city. They are old halls, and they have fallen into disuse. I understand there might be trepidations in taking such an artifact from my predecessor's crypt, but I assure you, it is ordained. The times we have arrived at are desperate, and when the heavens show their intent, one cannot stand too much on ceremony. We are so close now. Return. 
Well, the Primos has not graced the ears of his subjects in ages. What has he said to you? The circlet of our case. And Anakatos expects me to lead you to it? Has his reclusion left him senseless? Has he forgotten his history as well as his people? Very well. As I cannot refuse the Primos, I will meet you in the crypts in the undersewers of the city. Let us deal with this as quickly as possible. We can find it in the crypts beneath the city's sewers. They are old structures. Forgotten as the city was built above them. Be cautious in these lands.
keep close. There are worse things than marauders in these lower tunnels. They have lurked these walls for decades, raised along with the city years ago. What can I do? There. That is the artifact you seek. The circlet of Arkays. By taking it, Arkays' grave becomes an empty tomb. Let us depart. Onokatos has had his fun with me, and there is nothing left to plunder. I... it is nothing I can share with you, Beckoned. It is not worth your time. I always thought that... Were I to come to Arcase's crypt, it would be because of the work of gods alone. And here I am, by the will of none but Anakatos, flesh and blood. I cannot! I will not! Even after all these years, he has not forgotten his brand of viciousness! He knows I must obey his command. I apologize for my outbursts. However, it... it can be hard to let convictions go. But we must. We must. Take the circlet back to Anakatos. He is most likely waiting for you. Very well. No one comes down here anymore. It is left to ruin, for the Colossi have no more need of these halls, or those interred within them. How many years did I...
I almost did not see you. Yes?
Well done, Beckoned. The stowaway is no more. Please take this as a token of Idilla's gratitude. If you found a task you wish to take on from the petition board and complete it, I will recompense you for your trouble. Foundation is gold with runes of prayer, as I said. Now, it must be woven with blood and toil. The Colossi furnish the foundation, and nature furnishes the trappings. The laurels of the wreath are not crafted but earned. We seek Terex veins. Once they are ours, once the wreath is complete, the ritual of atonement can begin. I take it you have encountered a Terex before. Likely the mongrel, carrion-eating scavengers that plague us. They are a common foe. We seek the veins of the Alpha Terex. They are fierce and proud. All that is wild and savage in nature. To prove to the gods the righteousness of our faith, then we must conquer a mighty foe. They will serve. The gods sent you to bear witness to our atonement. To do that, we must complete the wreath of absolution. The wreath is made from the large feathers, the veins, of the Terex Alphas. They live in Eries to the south. Very well, Beckon.
must be the best. Anacotus walks among us, and the citizens are awed. This act seems small to you, Beckoned, but it is enough to give my people hope. I thank you, on their behalf, if nothing else. I listen. What can I do? Farewell.
We are here. That is good. I feel hope stirring in my veins once more. It is the prospect of reconciliation that has granted me a second youth. Come. We must kill the Alphas of each Eerie. With their veins in hand, we shall fulfill the gods' wishes. The Terex Eries lie in the wilds of the Teeth of Nauros, to the south of the city. We need not look far to find what we seek. But while there are many lesser Terex here, we seek only the plumage of their strongest and brightest. These are the true challenge. Very well, Beckoned. Feel my wrath! Feel Balon's embrace! Balon's embrace. Circlet must be brought. Thus we begin. And as we harvest these trophies, you shall learn the journey the Colossi have taken to get here. Once we were but savages, no better than the other giant kin. We were called Myru. And to that identity we were chained, until one day, Athene spoke to us. She spoke of a destiny and greatness that was not ours, but could be. She showed us the path of ascension, and we followed it here, to the teeth of Naros. 
No, we are far from the homeland of our ancestors. Undoubtedly, the gods wished us to renounce our savage history. It was necessary. Though the Jotun and Etin once regarded us as kin, they grew jealous of us, of the strength we gained from the gods' favor. Tensions rose to war. It was a sign from Athene to my people to seek a new homeland, where the bounty of her wisdom could be harvested eternally. We must act. Feel my wrath! Wandered the teeth of Naros in search of the homeland we were promised. And when hope seemed lost, we found the Hyperion. It was a divine artifact. No mortal hand could have crafted it, a massive stone, alone in the wilderness, with the image of a floating city engraved upon its surface. At the city's heart was the Hyperion itself, we knew then Athene was tasking us to craft this wondrous city, to form a covenant. But we betrayed that ideal. To test our worthiness, the gods have strewn throughout Armalur riddles, puzzles, and challenges. Answering them demonstrates our greatness. The Hyperion is one such challenge. Perhaps the greatest of them. And though we discovered it years before, we still do not have the answer. We must act. Embrace. rose, but the Hyperion did not follow. The heart of the city remained unmoved. That we could not abide. My predecessor, Arches, sought to force the Hyperion up, but the Hyperion rejected him, killing him and his followers, and sealed itself away. Our work here is concluded. As a show of thanks, take this helm. Once reserved for our strongest fighters, it is only fitting you receive it. I must make the gods see that my people can be redeemed for the faults of Arches. With the wreath in hand, I can conduct a ritual of atonement. As you bear the cipher, the conduit to the gods, you will bear witness. Come. 
We must conduct this ceremony at the site of our original transgression. Let us go to the Hyperion. If it will not, then why will you brought to me? To give pretense to salvation? To raise our hopes only to crush them with failure? I know the gods of my forerunners. They would not flaunt the answer to their riddles without sharing it. Now come. The Hyperion awaits. Salvation. You have come, good. We stand in a ground once hallowed beyond all things, now tainted by the excommunication of my people. Ever since that terrible day when arrogance and desperation brought about the disfavor of the gods, my followers have tended this place. Now come. We shall go to the antechamber of the Hyperion, the very spot where the sins of the Colossi were answered. The antechamber is the flawed design of Arches. It was the means by which he sought to force the Hyperion to join the city. 
It was to do so using the spark of divine magic Athene placed into each of us, that these fragments combined would create a force equal to that of a god. Such power was never meant to be wielded by the unworthy. The energies struck back at Arches, and the many assembled in his chamber, killing them. We are so close. Much was ruined in that dark hour. The magics holding the paths together were unbound. Only the cipher can reorder such magics. Press ahead and set the path. If you were curious, I could tell you more. Again, we find the way barred. I'm afraid I need your help once more. We have reached it. Beyond that stone is the Hyperion, the gift of the gods. The symbol of a covenant concluded. It rests out of reach, waiting for the day when the gods forgive our trespass, when they find us worthy again. Until now, I feared such a day would not come. We should begin. The gods visited this room once before. It seems only fit that you occupy their position. I will take my place where Arceus once stood. Long before, Arceus dared grasp the power of the gods and was judged according to his impudence. We act now as their analogues. 
In you, the gods visit this chamber once more. You shall stand where they appeared and made manifest their wrath. And I shall stand where Arche stood and bore the brunt of their imminent will. Come, Beckoned.